Hello everyone and welcome to this video. Today I'm going to try and make Flames here into a bigger version of himself. So Flames is a horse born in 2019. He is a mix between a Finnish Vaughnblood and a paint horse. I actually own his mom myself. This is her. Uh, it's Iris. And his stand is called Bounty and is owned by KH Stable. And today Flames is actually turning two years old and therefore I have decided to make him in his grown up version. I'm not going to ride him yet, but I'm just going to make him in full size. <laughs> and in this video you are going to see the full progress of how I made him into a big horse. And if you like this video, remember to uh, press the like button down below. And also if you want to see more of this kind of content, please make sure to subscribe. And with that said, let's go on with the video. So I started out with making a new template for him. I decided to make him a new template because it didn't feel like any one of the ones I had really would match him. Um, so yeah, I just made him a new one and this is kind of inspired by my horse Elon's template and kind of a mix with my horse Exuma's template. When it was stretched onto the paper, I just cut it out like any other template. And when the template was cut out, I made two more in paper. The reason why I did this is because he have an awful lot amount of spots um, and it is easier to just try and draw them on a piece of paper instead of directly on the stiffening fabric. Um, at least I find it a little bit easier that way, so yeah. And that way it's also way easier to erase if I make any mistakes. Here you can just see me tracing on all of his different spots and markings onto the paper. And drawing all the markings on his paper took so much time, so with a little time skip both of the sides were done and we are directly onto the ears. The ears also have some markings, so that is why I decided to do it the same way as with the two sides of him. And now it is on to the middle piece. I just took a regular piece of A4 paper and marked every 4 centimeters. Uh, that way I would have some strips that were 4 centimeters wide each, which is the same width as I use for the middle piece. After that, it is time to measure all of his markings. A lot of his markings go through the middle piece, so this took quite a lot of time. And you can kind of see my technique here. I just traced how long they were between every single spot. And after I had measured how long they were between his spots, I drew on all the spots on his middle piece. And the next step to do was to just take all of the things I have drawn and cut it into pieces. After I had cut out all of the pieces in paper, 
it was time to draw it onto the stiffened fabric. And if you're wondering what materials I'm using, I will leave a list down below in the description. And here in the background you can just see me watching some Twitch rivals. <laughs> After a long time, I was done tracing on all of the pieces to the stiffening fabric. Then it was time to cut it all out. <laughs> In the end, I was done and lived with a lot of pieces. I also drew on some arrows to all of the pieces. The reason why I did this is because to make sure that all of the hairs in the billboard is pointing the same way. And then it's time to iron all of the pieces of stiffening fabric onto the billboard. The orange billboard that I'm using is from a sewing kit that I got like two or three years ago in a Christmas gift, so unfortunately I can't remember where it's from. And the white wood boy is from the Brains Shannon, and it's from USA. And some of my friends from the US helped me get my hand on some. So unfortunately I can't link to the billboard that I'm using in this video. After I was done cutting out all of the pieces in the orange wallboa, I switch over to the white wallboa and do the exact same thing but just in white wallboa. And with all of the pieces cut out, I just laid them onto the floor just to make sure that all of the pieces matched up. And all of the pieces did except for one. <laughs> I accidentally made it mirrored, I don't know why this happened but yeah, let's just make a new one. But it was pretty quick to make a new one, so yeah. There you have it, all of the pieces laid out on the floor. And with that, it was finally time to get sewing. I started out by just sewing all of the markings together on the two sides. So hopefully in the end, I would have something that looks a bit more like a normal hobby horse piece. This part take a lot of time, but I actually really enjoy this part, so it didn't really bother me that much. But when I make the markings like this, I always try to make all of the stitches close together and as tight as possible. And with that, both of the side pieces were done and I also made the middle piece of camera. At this stage, the horse sides may have some wrinkles, but from my experience, it doesn't really make any difference for the end result. Now I'm just sewing on the middle piece to the two side pieces. I started out by sewing all of the white parts together first. I find this the easiest way because that way you don't have to think about switching the sewing thread all the time, so yeah. When I had sewed all of the white pieces on one side, I flipped the horse over and it's time to do it on the other side. But then I realized something. I 
had somehow misaligned one of the spots. And that meant I have to take off this whole white piece that goes all the way up here. So yeah. I started out with just taking off the white piece. Then I went all the way back to when I made the pieces out of paper and corrected my mistake. Then I traced it onto the stiffening fabric, cut it out. And ironed it onto the white fibre. And cut it out of the white fibre. And now it's time to sew on the little spot again. And it's in place. And let's just continue on again. Then I just sewed all the white parts together on the second side. And after that, it was time to do the exact same thing, but with the orange thread instead. And when I was done sewing together the middle piece to the two sides, it was time to flip the horse the right side out. But then I realized another little oopsie. I had somehow forgot to sew one of the orange parts together, so let's just flip the horse inside out again and sew that together. Okay, so now it should be done. <laughs> Then it was time to do the fillings. I always start out by doing the mouth, but before I had put in all of the fillings in the mouth, I made sure to secure it with some safety pins to keep the mouth closed. By doing it this way, I have found out that it often keeps the horse's mouth more closed. I also make sure to let the safety pins sit in the horse for like at least two or three days. I always make sure to take my time when I'm filling up a horse. By taking it slowly, I often get a bit of result. I also try to squeeze the horse between my knees when I am putting in the fillings. That way I found out that the horses usually get a little more flat. And here you can see how the horse looked after the fillings. And now it's time to do the ears. I sewed the ears together off camera, but I'm going to show you how I'm stiffening up the ears. I'm starting off by taking my template and trace it onto this kind of foam-like paper. I don't know what it's actually called. <laughs> Then I cut two of those out. And when those are cut out, I put them into the ears. I 
then use some glue to glue the ears onto the piece of foam. And I'm also using this little piece of paper that I have folded just to smooth out the glue inside the ear. And after that, I fold it gently and use these clamps to hold the ear together. And then let them dry overnight. The next morning, I sew the ears together in the bottom of the ears. And after that, I use some safety pins to place it onto the horse. I'm trying to find the perfect position before I lock it in with the safety pins. And then I just start sewing them on. This is the result. And after that it's time to do the mane. I use this big needle to attach some yarn to the horse. This piece of yarn is going to be used as the base for the mane and forelock. I'm just gently securing the piece of yarn by tying two knots in either end of the yarn. Then I take this piece of wood that actually is from IKEA because it's actually a tablet or phone holder, but I normally use it to cut out pieces for main. And then it's time to do the forelock and main. I start out by attaching some pieces of yarn to the forelock. And when I felt like it was done, I just continued on with the main. And when all of the pieces were attached to the single base yarn, I just sewed all of it on the horse. And after that, it was time for a little bit of trimming. Now it's time to do the eyes and nostrils. I use this black felt to do both the eyes and the nostrils. I have a template for both the eyes and the nostrils and I just use that to cut the felt to the right shape. And with 
that done, I use some safety pins to attach it to the horse before I sew it in place. And when I'm happy with the partition, I'm just sewing it all in place. For the little white shine in the eye, I just use some acrylic paint. And now for the final step. I took out the chip from Flames in the Fold version. And if you're wondering what this chip is, it's actually a hobby horse passport. I will leave a link to the website down below. Then I took out some of the fillings in the bottom of the horse. I did this to make room for me to actually sew the chip in. And so I attached the chip to a thread and a needle. And just sewed it in place. When the chip was in place, I used this little white piece of leather and I just sewed it on top of where the chip is placed. I do this because then I know where to scan the chip if I want to see his passport. After that, I just put in the fillings once again. And because the white leather piece went over one of his orange markings, I decided to paint him orange where it actually was supposed to be orange. But at first I felt like the orange I had picked was a little too orange, so I took a brown and laid it on top. I'm just using Pro Markers and they are alcohol based, so mixing them together was quite easy. Then I just took my phone and tested out the chip to see if it worked. And it did. It is just loading the page. And there it is. And yeah, I may need to update that picture now. It's a little old. But let's see the final result.